you're probably wondering why well, they'll be using some bread to fix the motor. Well, stay tuned and you'll find out. Bit of a problem with the, uh, the crate and the HP motor. This is actually the one that I had in the Mojave when we went to Sandy. Um, got a bit muddy, got a bit wet. I did swap them around. Can't remember why I swapped them around, but I did swap them around anyway. This one seized up a bit. Um, if you want to see that video, I'll put a link up here to where this one got really wet and muddy and the bearing seized up. So we're going to get that part, have a look at it, change the bearings over, and I'll show you how to do it. That's the lollipop lady, still looking good. Again, yeah, armor skins, put a link up in the description below where you can see that being used and fitted. We should be able to get the motor out now. One motor out. As you can see guys, it's a bit, bit rusty on the pinion and the front mo front bearing had seized up, a little rusty in there, so let me try to open that up and get those bearings out. ready to go now I always thought these were sealed and waterproof so the water couldn't get in there I was wrong actually the water gets it's not sealed around here or around here and also those holes here they go straight through straight through into the motor so it's only the motor the waterproofing is inside the motor it doesn't stop the motor the water getting in so just keep an eye on your bearings guys because obviously they clearly do seize up so now we've got to undo these screws I'll change the angle get in nice and close so you can see what's going on so two mil hex, take these front screws off. They could be a bit tight depending on if you've had them off before and whether they're loctited up. But they do need to be loctited back in. Let's see if we can get that front off now. There we go, it just pops off. As I said, as you can see guys, hopefully see these holes here go straight through straight through into the motor, so there's no waterproofing, there's no seal on there at all. This is the bearing that had gone funny. What there is, is inside, is a, like a gasket here, which just stops the dirt and the crud actually getting properly into the motor, but the water still gets in and can still get to your bearing. I'm gonna take the back off as well, because I wanna change both the bearings. And on the back, again, it's three, one, two, Three. Again, it's a two mil, two more hex. These are a lot smaller, these screws, so do not lose them. You can see they're tiny little screws. What I like to do is just put them on a, on a magnet, and that way, hopefully you don't lose them. If you get the back off, push down gently, on here, back will pop up. Careful, because there is a bushing and a little spring washer inside. Remember which way around it goes, the bushing on top and the spring washer down the bottom. So again, don't lose those. Here are our two bearings. First one's fairly easy to get out. This one here, which is one we want to replace. I've got a bearing removal tool, which helps pop it in there. Hopefully, give it a little knock. No, it's not coming out, so I'm gonna take it to a workbench and do it. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use this little hole here, the bearing over the hole, bearing pusher in there. There she goes, popped out on the floor. They are in there tight, guys, so just make sure you've got somewhere to knock it out from. So that's the first bearing out. First thing you can see, you're probably thinking, why don't we just open it up and, and clean it? Unfortunately, they are sealed properly sealed and locked in. I did try and open this one up, as you can see there. But the problem is if you get the shields off, you can't put the shields back on, so it would be an exposed bearing. So it's easy to replace them with new ones. They do give you the reference number around the edge of the bearing, and it is a 626 
2z or zz which means it's uh, the, the 2z is regarding the shielding and the 626 is the size so i have bought some replacements these are high quality skf bearings they're rated to 50,000 rpm reference and 80,000 rpm maximum and we'll pop this back in here now again it's very very tight to get back in ideally you want a a press but if you haven't got a press you can make your own take a g clamp put a bit of wood on the bottom to protect the bearing housing bearing housing on there a bit of wood on the top to protect the bearing tighten up and as we tighten that up pushes the bearing and there we go it's the bearing nicely housed in there now now we come to the back end bearing no hole on this one so you've got this bearing that's in there nice and tight and you've got to try and get it out somehow how do you think you do that this is where the good old bread comes in guys that's it i like hovis that's my bread of choice Choose whatever bread you like, doesn't really matter. But leave a comment down below which bread you actually prefer. Is it Hovis? Is it King's Mill? I don't know, it might be homemade. Leave a comment below, be interested to see what bread you'll like. A slice of bread and a drill bit. This is actually a six mil drill bit. So it fits in there nice and snugly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take little bits of bread, put them down there, tiny little bits to start off with. Roll it up, drop it inside, put the drill bit in, give it a little tap, take it out, another bit in, put it on there, little tap. So we do that, see what happens. You can see the bearing slowly being lifted out. There we go. Bearing is out. It has, as you can see, pushed in the shield a bit as well. And we have a bread bearing there, which we can just pluck out. One bread bearing. So that is how you use bread to help fix your bearings. Put that bearing back in and again use your, your press tool. bearing back in. Okay, now we've just got to put the motor back together. So the first thing you put on is the front bell end. And you wanna just pop it on there, move it around until it clicks into place. Then line up the screws to how you want this motor mount to be facing at the front, because you'll notice as the screws line up, these will be in a different position. So that's lined up one there. That's slight, I want mine right angles to these motors. So that's slightly out. So I'll turn it around again, line the holes up. Again, it's still out. Turn it around again, line the holes up. Okay, that's about as good as I'm gonna to get to right angle to the motor wires at the back. And then we put the screws back in. Just remember to lock tight them up. I haven't tightened those up yet because I just want to get the, the back on first. And again, remember to put your spring washer on, your brass bushing in, and then pop the rear bell case on, line it up. And pop those screws back in with a bit of a Loctite again. Make sure they're nice and tight. Go back to the front and we tighten these up diagonally. 
Make sure we've got a nice tight bond on there. Give it a little turn, make sure everything's sitting in there nicely. Appears to be. There we go, that's one motor put back together. We'll get back in the car and give it a test. Okay, let's get her plugged in and make sure she works okay. Need some batteries. Okay, guys, how to use bread to replace the bearings in your brushless motor. Hopefully, you found that helpful. Probably never thought that was a good use for bread. But anyway, guys, if you want to see more of what this Creighton EXB can do, remember to subscribe, smash that notification button so you don't miss any of our future videos. If you want to see what this Creighton EXB has been doing, I'll put a link to the playlist up at the end of the video. So take care, everyone. We'll see you on the next one.